nice to see everyone again. I hope you are doing well. And for today's video, we'll talk about topic two, and the entire topic will discuss about alkanes. We have five subtopics over here. We'll discuss about the structure of alkane, the naming of alkane, the basic source of alkane, and the physical and chemical properties of alkane. For today's video, for this video, we'll cover the 2.1 and also 2.2 only. So for the 2.1, we are going to learn the basic structure of alkane. Since the entire topic is talking about alkane, so I guess it's very important for you to know what is actually alkane. Okay, so let's see what is actually the basic structure of alkane. Alkane is a saturated hydrocarbon which has only single covalent bond. So by that in mind, hydrocarbon means you only contain hydrogen and carbon. Since it's an alkane, so alkane must be a saturated hydrocarbon where you only have single bond. And everybody knows that carbon can come with a four single bond. So one carbon atom will have four single bond. That is what we call sp3 hybridized carbon. So a standard carbon will look something like this. A carbon with four single bond. The four single bond of carbon can be attached to all hydrogen. Or the four single bond carbon can attach to another carbon branches or more carbon branches. It depends on the structure. So it can be attached to anything, even a ring of alkane with all single bond. So that is the basic that you should know about alkane, where alkane is a saturated hydrocarbon that have only single bond. We have two types of alkane over here. We have open chain structure and also cyclic structure. Open chain structure, we have a general formula of Cn, H2n plus 2. While for the cyclic structure, you have the Cn, H2n only. So let's see the example for the open chain structure. You can have C3, H8. So you can have the C3 is CH3. Attached to a CH2, attached to a CH3. So you can see over here, that is your C3H8 propane. Your 3 carbon alkane. Alright, you can have more than that. You can have your C5H12. So the C5H12 over here is your CnH2n plus 2, where the n over here is 5. So you can have your 5 carbon alkane, which is your CH3, CH2, 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 CH3. That is your 5 carbon alkane that we have a name of pentane. And you can count over here, you have the 5 carbon and 12 hydrogen to make it a complete alkane. Well, for the cyclic, you have your CnH2n. So the example of cyclic that I can give to you, the most simplest cyclic, is your C3H6. Why is only H6? Let's see. That is my 3-carbon cyclic. And we know that every carbon must hold 4 bond. So every carbon in this cyclic holding another 2 hydrogen to have a complete 4 bond. Therefore, you have the C3H6. That is your cyclopropane. We can have another one. We can have your C5 as well. But it's a C5H10. So when you have a C5H10 over here, your ring or your cyclic should be a 5 carbon ring. And like we agree, every carbon over here must contain another 2 hydrogen to have a complete 4 bond. That's why you have your H10. And that is your cyclopentane. Okay? Easy? Simple. Alright? So, bear that in mind, in your open chain structure, it's a CnH2n plus 2. And in your cyclic structure, it's your CnH2n only. This is the two type of alkane that we will discuss in this topic. So, let's move on to your topic 2.2. In your topic 2.2, we'll focus on the naming of the alkane, 
where we are looking to a few naming, the straight chain of alkane, the cyclic of alkanes, and also alkyl group when your alkane becomes substituent. Also, we will learn the rules and the tips in IUPAC naming. So let's start off with your straight chain alkanes. Your straight chain alkane that we will learn will be between carbon 1 until carbon 10 only. So don't worry about the naming for 11 carbon or 12 carbon. It won't come up. Alright, don't worry. We will focus only from carbon 1 until carbon 10. So this is the general name for the straight chain alkane starting from your methane until decay. I just want you to focus over here since it's an alkane. So all the name will be ending with A and E. The front part of the name will determine how many carbon we are having. If we are having one carbon, then it will be methane. If we are having two carbon, then it will be ethane, propane for three, butane four, pentane five, hexane six, heptane seven, octane eight, nonane nine, decane ten. So bear that in mind, that is the number of carbon that you have. And the structure that I give to you is their straight chain structure. Okay. And you can check the formula of your straight chain is your CNH2N plus 2. And that is the straight chain molecular formula of carbon 1 until carbon 10. Make sure you know how to spell them and how to write them correctly for this naming. So that is about the straight chain alkane from carbon 1 until carbon 10 all the way from methane until decane. Simple. Next, we will look at cyclic alkane. Cyclic alkane, we will focus only from carbon 3 until carbon 6, okay, in your syllabus. So your 3 carbon must be your cyclopropane, 4 carbon cyclobutane, cyclopentane, cyclohexane. You're basically adding the word cyclo in front, okay. And you can see over here, the molecular formula is CNH. N because they are cyclic alkane due to the presence of cyclic, so the number of hydrogen decreased by 2 compared to your straight chain. So for the cyclopropane, it's a 3 carbon ring, cyclobutane, 4 carbon ring, cyclopentane, 5 carbon ring, cyclohexane, 6 carbon ring. Simple. Okay. Just a kind reminder over here, again, make sure you can spell them correctly and they are all one word only. There is no space between the cyclo and the name of the alkane. So it's a cyclopropane without spacing, cyclopentane without spacing. So make sure they are one word only. Easy, right? Next, let's move to alkyl group. What is actually alkyl group? R group. Alkyl group is when your alkane act as a substituent. When your alkane is not in the parent chain, they are now as a branches or substituent, then we are going to change the name. We are basically going to change the A and E at the back to become Y, L over here. So let's see the example. We know that one carbon is actually what we call methane. So when methane becomes substituent, CH3, it becomes a and E changing to YL, methyl, alright? So from methane, it will change to methyl. Same thing over here. If it's two carbon, then it will be ethane. So your ethane right now changing to become ethyl because of the two carbon. And right now your alkene of methyl and ethyl is actually a substituent. Same thing apply to your propyl, to your butyl. Alright, we are changing the A and E at the back to YL. So we are changing from propane, A and E, changing to propyl, YL. Butane, 4 carbon, changing to butyl, YL at the back. So it's not that hard, it's quite simple. We are only changing the last three alphabet to YL. And that is when your alkane acts as a substituent of branches. Next, we have some special group of substituent. The first special group that I have over here is isopropyl. Look at your isopropyl. 
the red color bond over here means that it's attached to your parents. All right, it attached to your parent chain. Your isopropyl is a three carbon. Propyl is your three carbon. So if it's attached to a parent, if this is my long parent chain, your isopropyl will be something like this. Your CH attached to a CH3, attached to a CH3. And that is your isopropyl. This is your parent. Okay, your long parent chain. That is your substituent of isopropyl. Isopropyl is the three carbon in the form of isometric where you can see that the three carbon are now balanced. Okay, that is your isopropyl. Next, we have isobutyl. Just now, isopropyl is a three carbon balanced isometric. Right now, it's a four carbon isometric. Okay, so it's an isobutyl. So you can see your four carbon over here. One, two, three, four. Iso means you have one, two, and then you split them equally. All right, you open up the leg equally. So that is your isobutyl. Again, that is attached to your parents. Okay, so let's see. If you have a long parent chain over here, that is your long parent chain. And then you have your isobutyl attached. Your isobutyl will be attached like this. You have your CH2 and then attached to a CH and this CH holding two CH3. First and foremost is a butyl. It's a four carbon. All right, you can see that it's a four carbon. And that is your iso. Okay, that is your iso. So it's an iso butyl. Next, we have side Butyl. What is actually sac butyl? The sac butyl over here represents secondary carbon in the butyl. Look at your butyl over here. You have your butyl 4 carbon. So this is the secondary carbon in the butyl. Can you see that? Secondary carbon in the butyl. So same thing. I have my parents over here. So the carbon that attach to the parents are the secondary carbon in the butyl. So, it will look something like this. You have your CH, and this CH must be the secondary carbon in the butyl. One, two, the secondary carbon must attach to another carbon. Can you see that right now? So, that is your butyl four carbon. One, two, three, four. It's a secondary carbon over here that attached to the parent. So, that is what we call side butyl. Simple. Next, we have third butyl. So what is actually third butyl? Same thing like the secondary butyl. So third butyl is actually the tertiary butyl. Look at the carbon. So this carbon is the one that attached to parents. Okay. So this carbon in the butyl right now is a tertiary carbon. Can you see that? Tertiary carbon. Okay. I hope you remember how to classify the carbon. Yeah. So that is your tertiary carbon and this carbon is the one that will attach to your parents. So this is my parent long carbon chain. I will attach the tertiary carbon of the butyl to the parent. Okay. And that is what we call third butyl. Easy. All right. Simple. Very simple. Next, we have neopentyl. But that in mind, look at the spelling. The neo doesn't have a space in between. But the sac butyl and the third butyl having a space in between. So be careful with the spelling, all right? Don't miss anything that I give to you. If they're having a space, they're having a space. If they're having a dash, they're having a dash. If they're not having a space and a dash, then they are one word, okay? So you have your new pentyl over here. Pentyl, five carbon. So can you see the five carbon? One, two, three, four, five. So the neopentyl is a 5 carbon forming a cross. Can you see? Forming a cross over here. Okay. So that is your neopentyl. This is attached to the parents. Okay. So I have my long parent chain. That is my very long parent chain as an example. So the carbon that attached to your parent chain will be the CH2 attached to a carbon that holding the rest of the carbon. So you can see it's a neopentyl because you have a 5 carbon in total as a substituent and 
can you see that they are forming a cross? That is the cross they are forming. Okay, so that is your new pentil. Simple. Next, we go into cyclic. We have the first one as your cyclopropyl. If you remember the name, when they are just cyclo, they should call as cyclopropane. So when we are changing it to become your alkyl group, we are changing the A and E to YL. So we are changing from cyclopropane to cyclopropyl when they act as a substituent. So that is my parent chain again, guys. So my parent chain will attach this to the cyclic 3 carbon. And that is my cyclopropyl when it becomes a substituent. Next, you have your cyclobutyl, 4 carbon ring, become a substituent, YL. So same thing, I have my parent over here that will attach to the cyclic butyl. So it become a cyclobutyl as a substituent. Simple, we are only changing the A and E to YL when they become substituent. Next, we have cyclohexyl. So from the word cyclohexane, so we are changing the A and E to YL. So we have your cyclohexyl, same thing. When the cyclohexane become a substituent, we will call it as a cyclohexyl. Simple, easy. And last but not least is what happens when your benzene ring become a substituent. When your benzene ring becomes a substituent, we call it phenyl. Alright, that is your benzene ring if you remember. But when your benzene ring becomes a substituent, then it will call as phenyl. So you have your parent chain over here, the long parent chain, attached to the ring of benzene. Then this guy will be called as phenyl. Alright, when your benzene ring becomes substituent. Simple, easy. Next, we'll discuss the last part of this video, which is IUPAC rules. IUPAC rules is the rules that we are used in naming all organic compounds. So everything that you learn today in this video will be used in the rest of the chapters and also in the other chapters of naming. So make sure you understand the basic rules of the IUPAC, okay? It's a very important rules. So the first step of IUPAC naming is definitely finding the longest continuous carbon chain. And this longest continuous carbon chain will act as a parent chain. Just to remind you that longest continuous carbon chain doesn't mean moving from the left to the right or from the right to the left only. The longest continuous carbon chain is correct as long as they are the longest and the carbon chain doesn't break. So let's see. I move from my left, carbon number 1, moving to the right, carbon number 2, carbon number 3. And then the root go down, so I go down, carbon number 4. And then, I right now having a split, I have two choice, whether going to the left or whether going to the right. So, which side are we going? We are finding the longest continuous carbon chain. We of course going to the side that have more carbon. So, left having one carbon, right having two carbon guys of course moving to the right so that I can have more carbon. See that? So that is my longest continuous carbon chain that is not necessary moving from the left to the right only. It can move from the left to the bottom, from the bottom to the top, it doesn't matter as long as the carbon chain doesn't break. Okay, so that is my parent. So let's see how many carbon we have in this longest carbon chain. We have one. We have 2, we have 3, we have 4, we have 5, we have 6. So my parent chain over here, this guy will be my hexane. It's a 6 carbon parent chain, so it will name as hexane. Alright, simple. That is how we find the longest carbon chain. Make sure the carbon doesn't break. One second is not necessary only moving from the left to the Right, I want you to change this mindset. So, the second rule is we are going to give the lowest possible number for the substituent. If you are having substituent, your substituent deserves to have the lowest possible number. Okay, the way that we write is we are going to have the number in front of the substituent 
in front of the parent name. Okay, so we are going to look at the examples. Don't worry. We are going to use dash between numbers and alphabet. These rules apply in all conditions. We always use dash between number and alphabet in IUPAC naming. Okay, so let's look at that example. It's the same as the previous. So my longest carbon chain, if you remember, that is my longest carbon chain. And if you remember, we know that the parent name over here is hexane. Who is the substitute? The one that is not in the yellow highlight. The one that is not in the yellow highlight, that is your substituent. All right, that is your substituent. And to make sure that your substituent having the lowest number, you can start counting from either the top or from either the bottom. So to ensure that it have the lowest number, you can try. So let's see if I count from the top, I will start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So for the top, I will have number 4 for the metal group. Okay. If I'm counting from the bottom, I will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I will have number 3 if I'm counting from the bottom. So which one is the lowest number? Number 3 or number 4? Definitely number 3. That's why we will be start counting from the bottom. Where your methyl group right now will be holding number 3. Carbon number 3, position number 3. So can you see that? Use dash between number and alphabet. So I use 3 dash methyl. So to have the complete name of this structure, it will be the substituent number and group first before the parent. So the final answer will be 3 methyl hexane. That is the correct final answer. Okay, just to remind you, we must use dash in between number and alphabet. Between alphabet and alphabet, there should be no space. There should be no space between the alphabet and alphabet. So it will be actually one word over here. 3 methyl hexane. That is the correct answer. Simple. So after you have the longest parent chain, make sure your substituent will have the lowest possible number. You can start counting from either of the N. All right, you can always start counting from any one of the N of your parent chain. Make sure your substituent have the lowest number. That's it. Okay. And when you write the final answer, there will be dashes between number and alphabet. Between alphabet and alphabet, there will be no spacing. Simple. Next, let's look at the another rules. When you have two or more same substituent are present, prefixes are used. So let's see what prefixes is that. Prefixes die means that you have two repetition. Prefixes try means you have three repetition. Prefix tetra means you have four repetition. And when you have more than one numbers, you use comma between the numbers and numbers. So let's look at the example that I have on the screen. First and foremost, for this one, I will find the longest carbon. And my longest carbon is actually the same as previous, but I'm adding in more substituent. So my longest carbon is still this. So the one in my yellow color highlight is my parent. So I named the parent first. My parent right now is a six carbon. So my parent right now is hexane. I would normally do it like that before I combine them to become a complete answer. Next, I will highlight the substituent. That is my substituent and I call this methyl. Same thing, I have another methyl group over here. I will normally put it the name first. If you use this method, then it's easier. Don't, don't write the final answer straight away. You won't get it. All right, so do it step by step. Write the parent, write the substituent. And then now we are going to identify the Position, we are going to give number. So to make sure that your substituent are having the lowest possible number, you can start counting from either the top or either the bottom. So let's see which one. So if I'm counting from the top, I will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I will be taking number 3 and number 4 if I'm counting from the top. If I'm counting from the bottom, I'll be taking 1, Two, three, four, five, six. So again, I'll be taking number three and number four. So guys, both are the same. 
we are going to have both taking three and four. So in this case, the seed matter that you come from the top or the seed matter you come from the bottom. No, it doesn't matter because both ways of counting will give you the same position of three and four. So you can choose either one will do. All right. So let's say I choose that we count from the top. Okay, so we count from the top over here. We'll be taking three and four. So put down the number. This metal group will be taking three. So three methyl over here, four methyl. Okay, but since both of the substituents are the same, they are having the same substituent, methyl group, methyl group. So what do we do? We use prefixes di. All right. So we combine them to become three, four, di. Methyl. All right, can you see that? So we are going to combine them to become three, four dimethyl. Three, four. Why dimethyl? Because you have twice of them. So di. Since you have twice of them, means you need to have two position. So we need to put both of the numbers of the position. So in the other words, if it's a di, you need to have two numbers in front. If it's a tri, you need to have three numbers in front. If it's a tetra, you should have four numbers in front. Okay. Bear that in mind, every substituent should have a position. Every substituent should have a number in front. Okay? So the complete answer for this question will be 3, 4, between numbers and numbers, we use comma, dash, di, methyl. Bear that in mind, between numbers and alphabet, we use dash. Between alphabet and alphabet, there will be no space. And same thing over here, the parent is hexane. So the complete answer will be 3, 4, dimethyl hexane. Simple, easy. Okay, very easy. Just do it carefully and don't get this final answer straight away. Do it step by step, then you will get it. Okay, next, the rules are when you have two or more different substituents are present, the lowest possible number must be given to both substituent. Both substituent will try to have the lowest possible number that we call first point different. Okay, what is mean by first point different? I'll give you an example, it's just really an example. I'll give you two sets of numbers, so we will see which one is your first point different. So if your substituent having the number of 1, 2, 5, or your substituent having a number of 1, 3, 4, which one is your first point different? Which one is the one that having lowest number? The substituent having number one, number one. And then the second substituent having number two and number three. Okay, so number two was straight away is the first point different, is the lowest possible number. So this is the set of number that we will give to your substituent. And we won't take this because two is smaller than three. That is what we mean by first point different. Okay. If the first number is different already, we'll take the first number, whoever is the lowest. If the first number is the same, then we will look at the second number. So the lowest second number will win. We will take the sign. Okay, that is what we mean by first point, different. So let's look at the example that we have on the screen. Let me show you the longest carbon chain first. My longest carbon chain over here is this. It's a six carbon again. All right, like I say, it's not necessary moving from the left to the right. But in this case, if you realize, moving from the left to the right is the same as this. Alright, so that is my parent chain over here. Contains six carbon. As always, I will give name to my parent first. My parent right now is hexane, six carbon straight chain. Next, guys, we are going to name our substituent. So if you look at it, I have three substituents. Alright, all these three substituents are the same. Methyl group. In the other words, what prefixes we are going to use? We are going to use trimethyl later on, okay? Because of three methyl group, which are the same. Next, we need to identify the numbering. So we are going to calculate from the left to the right or from the right to the left. If you are unsure, it's pretty simple. Write both and see which one gives you lowest number. If I'm starting from the left, I will have number one, number two, number three, number four, that is my 5, that is my 6. So for the purple color, I will be taking number 2. I'll be taking number 4. I will be taking number 5. So for the purple color, we'll be taking 2, 
four, five. So let's see for the red color. I have number one, I have number two, three, four, five, six. So for the red color, I will be taking number two. Same. I'll be taking number three, guys. I'll be taking number five as well. So which one is the first point difference that is lower? Which one is the lowest possible number? Purple color or red color? Two, two, four, three. Straight away, three win. All right, the three win. So the red color will be the numbers that you will be counting. In the other words, you will be counting from the right hand side. That is your number one, number two. So we'll be taking two, three, five. As always, put number of it. That is your two, Matthew. That is your three, Matthew. That is your five, Matthew. All right, dash. Why dash? Because between number and alphabet, there should be always dashes. Combine them because we have three Matthew group. So we will combine them to become try. Okay, we will combine them to become try. And since it's a try, Matthew, you should have how many numbers in front? It's a try, so you should have three numbers in front. And the numbers must be arranged in ascending order. Starting with two, three, five. Must be in ascending order. Okay? So the complete name of this structure will be two, three, five, try, methyl, hexane. So some basic rules over here. Between numbers and numbers, they are comma. Between numbers and alphabet, there are dashes. Between alphabet and alphabet, there are no spacing. Simple. That is your final answer of 235 trimethyl hexane. Easy. Alright. Next, let's look at this. It's pretty similar when you still have two or more substituent. Alright. Different or same substituent. We are still looking at the first point different because you have more than one substituent. So there must be the first point different. The naming must be right now arranged alphabetically. When you arrange alphabetically, all right, the prefixes of di, the d in the di, the t in the tri, the t in the tetra, the s in the sec, the t in the third will be ignored. What do I mean by we are going to ignore the d, t, tetra, sec, and third over here? Means if I'm having a di material, the alphabet that I'm going to take count is the M. Alright, the alphabet that I'm going to take count is the M, not the D. Okay, if I'm having a sec butyl, alright, the alphabet that I'm going to take count is the B over here, not the S. That is what I mean by we are going to ignore. Okay, same thing over here if I'm having a tri -ethyl. So when you have a tri T, we are going to ignore. So we are going to take count of the alphabet E only. Make sense? So that is what I mean by ignore the alphabet of D in the di, the T in the tri, the T in the tetra, the S in the sec, and the T in the third. Alright, when you arrange the name in alphabetically order, we ignore this. We ignore this, we ignore this. We only take count the name behind it, okay? But the prefixes ISO and NEO will be included. In the other words, we will take count of the I and the N. So if I'm having an isopropyl, the alphabet that I will take count is the I. If I'm having a neopentyl, all right, the alphabet that I will take count is the N over here. So is that clear over here? Because you are going to arrange them alphabetically order, so it's very important to know which alphabet is included, which alphabet will be ignored. Okay, don't worry. Let's look at that example right now. Okay, I have this big structure over here. As always, let's find the longest carbon chain. So my longest carbon chain over here, that contains seven carbon. So that is my parent of seven carbon straight chain. Okay. As always, I will give name to my parent first. So my parent right now is a 7 carbon. So it's a heptane. Alright, that is my 7 carbon parent name. Next, we are going to highlight or identify our substituent. So I have a substituent 1. I have a substituent 2. I have a substituent 3 over here. Okay, name the substituent. 
two carbon, so it's a ethyl. One carbon, so it's a methyl. Can you see that? It's a propyl. But what propyl are we having? It's an isopropyl. Look at the structure. It's an isopropyl. So the name of this substituent, isopropyl. Okay. Next, we are going to identify the number. As always, the number must still be lowest. This one is quite obvious to come from the left or right. Why? Look at it. Your substituent, the first substituent, if I'm counting from the left, will be at carbon number 3. 1, 2, 3. If I'm counting from the right, the first substituent will be at carbon number 2. So it's quite obvious that we will be counting from the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Alright, it's quite obvious that we will count from the right. To get the lowest possible number where your methyl will have the number 2. Your ethyl right now having number 5. Your isopropyl having number 4. Okay, so that is the way that we count the number. So right now we want to write the complete name of it. So I have 3 substituents. I have ethyl starting with the E that we will take count. We have methyl starting with the M that we will take count. Isopropyl, we take care of the I or the P. We ignore only the di, tri, tetra, sec, and third. But we will take count of the iso, if you remember. Okay, so when we take count of the iso, I is the one that we are looking at. So you have your E, you have your M, you have your I. Which one alphabetically order come first? Of course, E, you have your five, ethyl. Between M and I, who come first? A until Z. I come first. So when I come first, we continue to the 4 isopropyl. Then only we move to your 2 methyl group. Continue to your parent heptane. So the complete name will be 5 ethyl 4 isopropyl 2 methyl heptane. Easy? Alright? Just a kind reminder, between number and alphabet, there is a dash. So between alphabet, numbers, alphabet, there is dash, dash. Between alphabet, numbers, there is a dash. So between alphabet, alphabet, there is no space. This rule is the basic in IUBAC. Alright? The comma, the spacing, the dashes, all that is the basic. Okay? So over here, we are going to arrange them in alphabetically order when you have more than one substituent. Be very careful with what alphabet is going to ignore. We basically only ignore this. Other than this five thing, alright, other than this five thing, the rest of it we will take the first alphabet. Okay, except the di, tri, tetra, sec, and third we will ignore. So basically you just need to memorize this. Okay, the rest we will take the first alphabet. Okay, so I hope you know a to Z, yeah? So make sure you know A to Z very correctly. Next rules, when you have two or more substituents are present on the same carbon of the parent chain. When you have substituent at the same carbon, so what do we do? We repeat the number. Easy. Alright, if both sitting at carbon number two, we have two and two. Same thing, we will still arrange them alphabetically. Alright, that one is for sure. So over here, let's see my longest carbon. That is my longest carbon. Next, your substituent. I have two substituents over here. I have my methyl group. I have my ethyl group. Okay. Same thing. I forget to name my parent. Make sure you name your parent first. It's a six carbon chain. So my parent right now is a hexane. Six carbon. So it's a hexane. Okay. And then you have your methyl group and ethyl group. And if you realize, they are both located on the same carbon. All right. The problem over here, the numbering, from the left or from the right? Quite obvious from the left will be carbon number 1, carbon number 2, carbon number 3, 4, 5, 6. Alright, so we will be taking number 3 if we are moving from the left. But if we are moving from the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So obviously we are taking number 4. So 3 and 4, which one is lowest guys? Easy. Obviously, we will take the carbon number. 3. In the other words, we will be taking the red color set, the red color number. So, the purple color will go away. 
So when you have the number already, your ethyl will be at 3 ethyl. The methyl will be at 3 methyl. Alright, simple. Just repeat the number. Whenever your substituent is on the same carbon, just repeat the number. Who say that you can only use number 3 once? No. If you have two substituents on that, just twice. If you have three substituents in that, use three times. It doesn't matter. Okay, as long as it's the correct number. So arrange alphabetically. So the alphabet that we will take count is the E and the M. And quite obvious over here, E and M. I mean, if you don't know which alphabet comes first, guys. You know what? Go back to kindergarten. Ha ha ha. No. Just, you know, you have your M and E, so we'll be taking the E. So the E will come first. So we have your 3-ethyl, 3-methyl, hexane. And that is the way that we write. Okay? Just kind of reminder, every substituent deserves to have their position. Every substituent deserves to have their position. So in the other words, whenever you have a substituent, you must tell us where your substituent is located. So you must have a number for one substituent. So when you have more than one substituent, every substituent should have the number. Okay? So between the number and alphabet, there is a dash. Between alphabet and alphabet, there is no spacing. Alright? Clear? Simple. Let's continue. When you have two or more substituents are present on the same carbon of the parent chain again, you should have two numbers in front of the di. You should have three numbers in front of the tri. You should have four numbers. Alright? In front of the tetra. That is a standard. So let's look at the example that I give to you. Similar question, but I'm changing the substituent. My parent is still the 6 carbon chain over here. So my parent name will be still hexane. Quite obvious. My substituent over here is my methyl group. Over here is my methyl group. Always start like this. Don't get the final answer straight away at the beginning. You won't get it. Okay? Start with the parent, circle your substituent, number your substituent. Okay, so right now we number the substituent. I have six carbon. Counting from the left or counting from the right? So counting from the left, obviously, so that I will have one, two, three, lowest number. Four, five, six. All right, I'll count from the left because from the left, I will get number three. If I'm counting from the right, I will get number four. So number three, obvious, is the lowest number. So number 3 win, I will have 3 methyl, 3 methyl. Can you see that? Right now, I'm not having only they are on the same carbon. They are even same substituent. Same carbon 3, same substituent. So I will combine them with a dimethyl. So how do I write? What do I mean by two numbers in front of the di? You should have your final answer as 3, 3 dash di methyl hexane because you have two substituents over here even though they are the same substituent but you are having two substituents of dimethyl so when you have two substituents they deserve to know the position of each and every one so every substituent must have a number so when you are having a di in front of your substituent you should have two numbers in front simple easy okay even though they are the same number, the numbers still need to be repeated. Okay, simple. Let's move on. When you have two different parent chains of equal length, we are going to choose the one with more substituent or our K group. We always go for the one that have more our K group. So the first longest that I can have is this six carbon straight. The second longest that I can have, guys, is this. The blue and the yellow right now. Okay? So which one is the parent chain that will be chosen? Look at the yellow. The yellow one, alright? Just imagine the yellow one only. Hide the blue. The yellow one will only come with one substituent. This one. Alright? Anything other than the yellow is this group. So you only come with one substituent. Your isopropyl. Let's look at the blue. So if the blue is the parent, Alright, if the blue is the parent, then you are going to have two substituents. You are going to have this as the substituent. You are going to have this as the substituent. Alright, can you see that? If you are having the yellow as your parent, you only have one substituent, one big group. But if you are choosing the blue as your parent, you are having two groups. So like I say, 
when you have the parent chain of the same length, of the equal length, the one with more substituent will be selected. So which one is selected right now? The yellow or the blue? Of course, the blue will be the parent chain because it contains more substituent. All right, simple. So the yellow go away and you have the blue as your parent right now. So when your blue color as your parent right now, identify the longest carbon that you have. The longest carbon of the blue right now is six. You have a six carbon. So when it's a six carbon, again, it's your hexane. All right. Name your substituent. Your substituent right now, that is your methyl group. That is your ethyl group. Name it. All right, make sure the spelling, everything is correct. And right now, we give number. So are we going to start the number from the bottom or from the top? Which one? Obviously, from the bottom because it will give you the lowest number where the first substituent, methyl, will get carbon number 2. So you have your number 1, you have your number 2, you have your 3, you have your 4, 5, 6. Okay, so this one will be 2 methyl. This one will be 3 Ethyl. Okay, so when you write the final name, we are not looking at the numbers. We are looking at what, guys? When you arrange the name, the alphabet comes first before the number. We need to look at the alphabet, not the number. Okay, so when you write the name, alphabetically order comes first. E comes first. So the final name will be 3 ethyl, 2 methyl, hexane. Bear that in mind. In writing the final answer of the naming, alphabet comes first before the number. The priority is towards the alphabetically order, not the number. Okay, I hope you are getting better at this time with more exercise already with so many examples. Let's look at when you have a cyclo as a parent. Okay, when you have a cyclo as a parent, what happened? When you only have one substituent, that guy must be at carbon number one. Your parent will be your cyclopentane over here. So when your parent is your cyclopentane, your substituent over here will be methyl. And since you only have one substituent, and we say that it must be at carbon number one. So your final answer is not needed to put the one because everybody knows that it must be located at number one. So your answer can be only methyl cyclopentane it's not needed to put the number one because everybody knows that it will definitely be at carbon number one when you only have one substituent at the cyclo so it's not needed to put the one okay so that is your methyl cyclopentane easy better in mind we can only ignore the number one we can only ignore the one when you only have one substituent when you have more than one substituent then you must write the number one Okay, next, when the cycloalkane have a two or more substituent, let's see. Starting with the one at the lower alphabetically order. So the number one will normally be given to the lower alphabetically order. And then we will move to the right direction that give the lowest possible number to the other substituent. So let's look at the example. So obviously, my parent over here is my cyclopentane. All right, a five carbon ring. My substituent, I'm having this one, one carbon, so it's a methyl group. So what is this? That is your iso, guys. That is your iso, how many carbon? Three carbon. So this is my isopropyl. Okay, write that first. Then we put down the number. So methyl M and iso I. Iso with the count of the I, not the P, all right? With the count of the I. So M and I, which one comes first? So obviously, if you know A to Z, you know that I definitely comes first. So number one will give to I. So when number one give to I, we will round the number to the top or we will round the number to the bottom. So if this guy is definitely number one, and if I round to the top, this will be number four. One, two, three, four, okay? But if I round to the bottom, I will have 1, 2, 3. So 3 and 4, which one will be definitely 3? That's why I say you will follow by moving to the direction that give the lowest possible number to the other substituent. Because when you're in the ring, you can go clockwise or you can go anti-clockwise. So decide whether
whether you are going clockwise or anti-clockwise by making sure the other substituent having the lowest number. So I will definitely move to the bottom. All right, that is my two, that is my three, that is my four, that is my five. So that my substituent will have number one and number three. So it will be one isopropyl, three methyl group. So what will be the final name? Alphabetically order come first. So I saw alphabetically, I come first. Therefore, your final name will be 1-isopropyl-3-methyl-cyclopentane. Simple. And that is how we identify the number in your cycloalkane when you have more than one substituent. Bear that in mind, in a cyclic, you can go clockwise or anti-clockwise. We always go to the direction that give the lowest number to the other's substituent. Okay? Easy. And like I said just now, we will ignore the number 1 when you only have one substituent. But when you have more than one substituent, you must put down the number 1 also. Simple, simple. Next, when your cycloalkane is attached to a straight chain, what happens when you have a cycloalkane and a straight chain? The one with the longest carbon will be parent. Is it? We are still talking about the longest carbon. Simple example, I have a 5 carbon ring over here. I have a 6 carbon straight chain. The one with longest carbon will become parent. So my parent will be this guy, 6 carbon. When the 6 carbon become parent, so that is your hexane. Your cyclo over here will be your substituent. Cyclopentyl is a 5 carbon but right now act as a substituent and it's located at carbon number one. So when it's located at carbon number one and you only have one substituent, so you can ignore the number one and the final answer of the name can be straight away cyclopentylhexane only. You can ignore the number one because you only have one substituent. So when you don't have the number one in front of that substituent, of that one substituent, we straight away know that it's actually located at the carbon number one of your parent. Simple, easy. Last but not least, guys, when you have a cycloalkane attached to a straight chain, same thing. But right now, the cyclic and the straight chain are the same length. The one with more substituent will be parent. So let's look at the example. I have a 5 carbon ring over here. I also have a 5 carbon straight chain. Which one will become the parent? So let's see. If I'm taking this as a parent, I will only have this one big substituent. Okay, so I have one substituent if I'm taking the straight chain. But if I'm taking the ring, if I'm taking the ring as the parent, how many substituents I'm having? I'm having two substituents. I'm having the first straight chain, I'm having the second straight chain. So one substituent and two substituent, which one will become the parent? Obviously, the cyclic will become the parent because we have more substituent. Always, always remember when you have the same length of carbon, you always choose the one with more substituent to become parent. Easy. Name your parent. Your parent over here will be your cyclopentane. All right. I have my substituent. My substituent is a five carbon. So that is my pentyl. I have a two carbon, my ethyl. All right. Numbering. Which one comes first? P and E. Because it's a cyclic, so alphabet can have the priority. E and P. Definitely E will be carbon number one. And if you look at it, going clockwise or going anti-clockwise. Going to the bottom or going to the top. Of course, going to the top so that I will have number one and number two. So my ethyl will be at carbon number one. My pentyl will be at carbon number two. And the final name of this compound will be one ethyl, two pentyl, cyclopentane. Simple. Easy. So I know that this video is a bit long. I know that there's a lot of rules and regulation, but don't worry because everything that you learn in here will be used again for the rest of the semester. 
you will use this Ayurvedic rose in all your alkin, your alcohol, your halo alkane, your carbonyl is the same rose because you'll be using Ayurvedic naming in every single topic of organic compound. Okay, so don't worry. Even though it's a lot, even though it's very long over here, but since you are going to use it again and again, you will eventually be very good. With one condition, practice make perfect. So make sure you understand every single rules that I'm teaching you right now. And if you have any question, as always, drop me in the comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So I hope this video helps you in your Ayurvedic naming. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you back in the next video.